YouTube, what the crap's going on? I'll tell you what's going on. Gaming M7 is going on. That's right, MSI, once again, delivers the goods. And I mean the best of the goods here. Well, some of you may say not, because, you know, there's some folks out there now who are liking Ryzen and then the X99 series, but whatever. When it comes to Intel's um, uh, Skylake or Kaby Lake, this is the good stuff right here. This is a Z270 Gaming M7, and this was provided to me by MSI, so I want to thank them very much for giving me the opportunity to review this with you. And I had a couple specific purposes why I wanted this board, and I'm going to talk through those with you. So one of the big reasons I was interested in the Gaming M7 was a feature it has called Game Boost, which is really cool, and you're going to like this. So let's say that you really want to get the most out of your processor but you're not an overclock junkie, and you don't know everything about voltages, or the multipliers, or V-core, or anything else that you need to know, and you're worried you're gonna burn out your processor. Well, the engineers at MSI, and I like engineers, because I am one, have come up with a great feature, and it's called Game Boost. I've used a little bit of this in the past on a Gigabyte motherboard that was a different system, and I've used a little bit of it on a past MSI board, and it was never great, so I'm hoping for big things, and I'll be able to tell you what the Game Boost does, but essentially there's eight different settings that it has. There's a physical knob on the motherboard that you can turn and push a button. It's pretty sweet. It's like an overclock button, literally. You turn the knob to the setting you want and push the button, or you can do a software button, both in BIOS and in Windows. It's pretty sweet. There's a lot of control, and it has presets for certain Skylake and KB Lake processors. So it would be the i5 ending in K and the i7 ending in K from both Skylake and KB Lake. Um, there's presets for it and it tells you uh, if you set it to say profile two, it tells you what it's going to aim for in terms of clock um, and it does all the automatic uh, voltages and everything else for you. It's a really cool feature and I'm extremely excited to use it because you all know I play Total War games and Total War is a very CPU intensive game and it has really gotten me into overclocking. But I don't know enough about it to really get great at it. Sure, I could go out and learn, but let's just say I'm looking for the easy way out, and I think this is going to be perfect. I have a new KB Lake processor. It's a 7700K. I'm sure there's going to be all kinds of arguing about Ryzen down in the comments right now, but this video is not about Ryzen uh, versus Intel. It's just about me wanting a great processor that I can overclock, and KB Lake should be great. My goal is to get the KB Lake up to 5 gigahertz. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted this board, because the game boost in it can do that for me. Now, this board has all kinds of extra features. It's got RGB lighting, which is really cool. So you can light the board up to match whatever kind of decor you got going on in your case. Obviously not a performance booster, but it's definitely an ego booster. And let's be honest, if you're building a computer, yeah, you kind of want some of the ego stuff. It makes you feel better. It's also got uh, Audio Boost Pro and Nehemic Sound, which is a great suite if you want to boost the sound in your game. I have that also on my MSI laptop that I'm going to review soon. Great feature if you're looking to get the most out of the sound. It's got DDR4 boost, so you can make the most out of your DDR4. It supports up to a 4000 megahertz DDR4 on an overclock pro profile, so I don't think you're going to be having problems with RAM speed. With you can see board. on the picture in the front, and we'll take a look at it whenever I get you a picture of the board. It has the steel armor um, for your PCIe slots, which is great. Not having to worry about wrecking your board with the heavy graphics cards you put it in, because a lot of graphics cards today are pretty deep. The board has two CPU fan headers, one normal CPU header, another for a pump fan if needed. There's four four-pin system fan headers, so plenty of room for fans if you're going to need a big case with lots of fans, and then also obviously lots of great support for water cooling. One of the other features that I'm a big fan of, and I'll make sure and show you, is that there's an M.2 shield. Um, some of you may have tried to put M.2 uh, solid state drives on your motherboard before and notice that they get up underneath the graphics card sometimes and get very hot. There's a shield here that acts like a bit of a heat sink. I'm probably not pointing right at it, but I'll show it to you whenever I get some uh, zoom in on the board. And that shield keeps your SSD protected from that excess heat and it looks great while doing it. It's a feature I think you're going to really like. Uh, plenty of M.2 ports on this, and they uh, support PCIe as well, so you can get the most out of those new NVMe SSDs. Blazing so in speed. total, that's three Turbo M.2s and six SATA 3 ports. So plenty of room to support your optical drives, your HDDs, SDDs of all varieties. So you should be in great shape when it comes to storage and other drives. Great features, it's got some USB 3.1 Type-C connections, a lot of Type-C going around now with new Android phones and other things. Uh, even like the Nintendo Switch has a Type-C 
So these Type-C connections will be handy in case you have devices that you want to be able to plug in to transfer data or to charge uh, while you're using computers. So always a great feature. So that's kind of an overview of some of the features uh, that I was interested in when I got this board. So basically, to sum it up, I want to overclock the junk out of a KB Lake processor. So let's show you the setup that I'm going to do it in with the gaming M7. All right, so here is the motherboard uh, mounted into my case. Now, in case you're curious, the case is a, a Corsair um, Carbide Air 540. It's the same case I used in the last MSI build they sent me when they sent me that beautiful Empower Titanium board, uh, which that one has now gone on to another user to, uh, to give it some good life. They were real excited about it. But yeah, here's the gaming M7 mounted again, just beautiful. Look at that black background up against the black back plating. The red cables got the perfect. I guess I'm an MSI junkie now. They got me hooked on this good stuff. So yeah, I've got the um, the red cables and everything ready to go. Let's point out some of the main features. You can see your uh, DDR4, the DIMM slots here for your RAM. Uh, four of them, of course, on this board for a maximum of 64 gigs of memory. Um, I'm running 32 gigs of the Corsair uh, RAM in it right now. Um, I am using a Corsair uh, H100i V2. Uh, and then my KB Lake processor is up underneath here. Um, I was going to show you the processor and everything, uh, but I figured that this would be fine. You can see where just this is attached because you can still see uh, the beautiful motherboard for the most part. And um, it saves you from having to watch me fumble around getting this stuff installed properly. Um, you can see the awesome steel armor they got going on on the DIMM slots and then also on the PCIe slots. Here is the uh, M.2 shield that I mentioned to you. So this is going to keep your uh, M.2 drive safe from the waste heat coming off your graphics card if you want to mount one there. And it is over the top of one of three turbo M.2 slots. Um, and there's a couple of turbo U.2 slots over here as well. And then your six SATA ports that are over here on the side. Uh, so lots of features. Down on the bottom I've already got my USB headers, my uh, HD audio, and then my front power pins and reset and everything else all plugged in as well so you can kind of see that along here at the bottom. Now earlier I mentioned to you an overclock knob with a button. That is found right here. Um, so you can actually twist this knob and then hit the red button to overclock the computer. Or you can do this both in BIOS and in Windows. I did it in BIOS, but it works just as well in Windows and also physically turning the knob. That was one of the main reasons why I wanted this board. Well, that, and I can't lie the red lights on it, and this nice little MSI Dragon thing, nothing gonna be wrong with that either. That's an overview of the board in the computer. It's looking absolutely lovely. I'll get you some footage of it once it's fired up so you can see what it looks like. And then of course I'll have to do a follow-up video once I get that sweet 1080 Ti in here as well. I'll have the whole theme going on at that point. All right, so here's the inside of the case with the build all complete. Um, as you can see, it is marvelous. Absolutely marvelous. <laughs> So you get to see everything all in place. Got my sweet Corsair Dominator RAM, but really, uh, you know, and of course that GeForce 1080, which this is soon to be, and you'll like this MSI. Uh, no, they're not paying me to say this. I'm just excited about it. I'm gonna get me a sweet black and red MSI 1080 Ti here very soon. Hopefully at the end of the month, they'll go on sale. I'm gonna get one of those to replace this version here. And I'm sure, I'm sure uh, MSI will like that because this is the Gigabyte card. And, I'm sure they'll want me uh, dumping that out for the Gigabyte car, but yeah, love the black look where it gets up in here in the case. So I got the black back plating in the case, and then the black motherboard. Obviously, I'll show it to you all lit up, but once you get the, uh, the red lights and the red cables, and then when I get that red and black 1080 Ti, I'll make sure and show it to you all. It is going to be beautiful. Absolutely beautiful build. Absolutely loving it. I'm going to go fire this beast up, and we're going to check out the performance on the overclocking. All right, now here is the finished product all turned on. I apologize I don't have my camera in the stand anymore, so if it's shaky, that's just the shaky hands of air. Oh my goodness, it looks beautiful. Obviously, I think it would look a little bit cooler still with the uh, red LED fans, but I'm going to prevent myself from spending more money on my computer since I have the new graphics card coming up. That's going to look awesome. But anyway, there is the awesome internals with the gaming M7 in place. Check out the sweet RGB light effects all over it. Very, very nice. Very nice. Excellent touch. Beautiful build. Great motherboard. Let's go check out some of the features in Windows. All right, I'm gonna do my best to do this because I'm holding the camera with one hand and using the mouse with the other. This is the uh, game boost feature over there in the corner that I told you about. 
Uh, this is the BIOS that we're in here, MSI Quick BIOS 5. Um, and this Game Boost feature uh, will automatically overclock your uh, CPU and it'll match with your RAM speed. Um, and then uh, right now I have it set to uh, 6, which is a 4.9 uh, gigahertz overclock. The stock on my processor is uh, 4.5 at, um, at the boost speed. We're going to click here and I'm going to show you just how easy this is. I've just set it to 8. 8 is the 5 gigahertz setting. And then all I have to do is just go over here, click out of BIOS, and we're going to save the changes. And that's it. All right, so it's time to see if this thing can really do what I said it could do. Um, so I've got a few different programs pulled up here, and I'm going to explain a few things. Um, I have MSI Command Center, which is a feature that comes with the board open. Now, I find for the most part that this software is really quite good, and I have a feature disabled accidentally. Um, you can actually do the game boost from right here, but I have it disabled, um, and you can, you can go into the settings and change it to where uh, you can do that from here, but I have it disabled so that I can do it from BIOS. Um, but in any case, I was sitting back here, it'll show you, here's all my different CPU cores, and it shows you uh, the multiplier they're at, which right now is by 50, and we can confirm that over here on this uh, CPU-Z MSI edition, so my core speed is 5 gigahertz, and we'll run a little benchmark here in a minute. I've got temperature recording down here too. Uh, you can see it runs pretty hot. Now, um, part of the temperature spike actually is MSI Command Center, it uses a little too much overhead, I'll say that about it. but. The KB Lake processor does run a little hotter in general. I think mine, whenever um, I, I can easily run this on five gigahertz and I have, and I didn't have any issues with the heat going above about 84 degrees whenever I was at like full load on the processor, which to me is perfectly safe. I decided I was just gonna back it off to 4.9 for a couple of reasons. One, it gives me a little less heat. And then this uh, V core here drops down significantly because uh, that's pretty high. Uh, I don't know if it's anything that's going to ruin this, like I said, since the heat doesn't get out of control, but that's just, it is what it is. So, um, but yeah, so you'll see the temperature, temperature is not like super impressive to me, but that's probably more of a factor of this program having a little bit of overhead and the KB Lake just running a bit hotter. Um, in fact, we can just show you, I'm going to go over here and run a bench and uh, we're going to benchmark the processor. So we're going to hit bench CPU and we will bench it up against the Sky Lake and see how it does overclock to five gigahertz. You can see my temperatures over there. Again, we're not gonna do this for a long period of time, but the temperatures uh, right there, actually it just got up over 90, which I've not had it do before. That's probably the hottest I've ever seen it get on this five gigahertz. Now I have turned down my, my fan speeds just a little bit, and that could have something to do with it, but there you go. That's the benchmark just to kind of show you and uh, if we wanted to test the temperature, of course, when you're overclocking, you can do that. And like I said, I do think that this program eats up a little bit of heat um, in the sense that it uses a little too much overhead. But let's go ahead and bench the CPU. Oh, we already benched it. Let's stop that. We're going to stress test the CPU. So this is going to run all four cores pretty much all out. You can see that we're right about 90 degrees there. With my fans tweaked just a little bit the other day, it was holding steady at about 84. But you can see here, I mean, nothing that's going to blow up my processor. As long as the ambient temperature in the room stays normal, we can run at 5. Now, of course, if you're a real overclocker, you might be able to get 5 gigahertz out of this trip, uh, chip without running it clear up to this uh, 1.382 V-Core, which is pretty hot. Um, but yeah, anyway, you can see here that roughly what temperature we're going to run at when the cores are running all out. Um, and of course you could let it run this way for a while just to make sure that the heat would be steady and it's kind of doing some weird things over here too. So we're going to stop. Uh, but in any case, that'll give you an idea just to show that the, the built-in overclock did work. Um, since it's only 100 megahertz different, I prefer to run this chip at 4.9 just because I don't have the knowledge to adjust the voltage on my own to bring down that V core just a little bit. Um, but I mean, you could, I think you could safely leave this there, especially if you just tweak your, um, pump speeds and stuff. Right now I have my water cooler set to a quiet profile. I could turn the profile up to more of a performance profile and you could keep this cooler and easily keep this thing overclocked, um, with no issue. So this was the main reason why I got the board. It does work. Um, like I said, I think just for everyday purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and run this at 4.9 just for longevity of the chip's sake. And at some point I may manually uh, change the voltage and go ahead and run it at five. 
because uh, again, nothing here significantly worries me about running it this way, but that just shows you how easy it is. I showed you the game boost in BIOS. You can pick your game boost, any level of it. It goes all the way up to 5.2, which I haven't tried the 5.2 because this was a lot of voltage and it was running pretty hot already. So I just left it right here at the five, but there is a couple more settings, one that can go to 5.1 and another to 5.2. Um, and there were some people who were able to get their, um, their KB Lake processor cranked all the way up to 5.2. And that's pretty impressive. So the single the single core performance on this processor is outstanding. Um, I know there's a lot of talk out there right now because of uh, uh, you know uh, the new Ryzen, and then of course there's the X99 series that blow this thing away in in multi core performance. And like right now, I mean this this is running too hot. And, and it's uh, there's other programs you can use as a hardware monitor. You don't have to use MSI Command Center. There are a few things I like in the Command Center. It's got these different things for voltage and fans. You can, can you can control your fan speeds and everything in here. It's, it's very nice features. It's, it's got a lot of cool stuff. The only thing I would say about Command Center to help MSI improve is kind of work on the overhead. This program uses a little too much system overhead, and sometimes it's kind of slow to boot. Um, so I think that if you just did a little bit of work on it in terms of uh, you know cleaning up a few of those issues with it, um, that it would work a whole lot better. But over, overall, I mean, it's, it's a pretty cool program. I just clicked on DRAM there, and I... Not even sure I meant to. Now it's trying to open something. That's what I get for clicking on things that I shouldn't. But uh, in any case, yeah, uh, it, it's a neat program. Here it is over here, the DRAM timing. So you can change all your timings and other stuff there. It's, it's kind of like BIOS within Windows. It is really pretty neat. Um, you got DRAM sensors. This stuff will show you all the different things on your motherboard, your CPU temperatures, um, any other temperatures on the motherboard. So and again, pretty neat feature there. Uh, if you go into settings, this is where I pulled up the recording here where I'm recording the temperature. You can set the time frame and go through and record the temperatures so that if you're running benchmarks and other stuff, which I did go run uh, Fire Strike and also, uh, oh, what do you call it? Uh, Fire Strike and what's the one? Time, time Spy. I ran both of those. Uh, scores were really pretty fantastic. Um, I can try and get a screenshot of the scores maybe um, to post on Twitter at some point. But yeah, I mean, it was, it was good scores. Definitely um, respectable scores for what you'd expect with this type of build. Um, and I'm trying to think if there's any other features in here. Under information, um, here's the hardware monitor that I have pulled up right over here. Like I said, you can use their hardware monitor. I actually prefer, I think it's like, a, is it like CPU... H uh, hardware monitor or something like that. I don't, I don't remember the exact name of it, um, but there's some other hardware monitors that work a little bit better with a little less overhead, um, in my opinion. But overall, the MSI Command Center is a cool app. If they just work on a few tweaks to it, like I said, to improve the boot up time. Um, otherwise, this is pretty killer to have this much control over your computer in a very handy, very easy to use program. Um, and just the ability to overclock from Windows, to change all your fan voltages from Windows, um, to record your temperatures, uh, you can record your fan speeds, your voltages, you can go through all kinds of history. It's really pretty impressive. It's, it's really good work. And if you're an enthusiast um, about gaming hardware, um, this is definitely some good stuff to have. Not to say, like I said, that they can't make a few improvements on it, because they can, um, but definitely some good stuff. Hope you all enjoyed this. I really appreciate MSI sending me this. This is an incredible opportunity and I can't thank them enough for including me and letting me show this board to you. Um, but I can tell you this thing kills it. I'm running this new monitor in 1440p um, and I'm getting still on this build with the 1080 and this overclock processor. Um, I'm getting almost 100 frames a second out of Warhammer. I think it was 95 frames a second on the benchmark on the ultra settings. That is impressive. It's very impressive. So. Great setup, it does what I need it to, which is to crank out as many FPS as possible so I can give you all a buttery, smooth, high quality experience in Warhammer. And I really appreciate MSI helping to power me in doing that. And um, let's close down some of this stuff so you all can see the background. They've got a pretty sweet background. I may switch back to their dragon background because it was pretty cool too, but they got this enthusiast gaming background that you can throw on there if you want. Uh, just another one of the nice touches. But again, appreciate MSI, you're fantastic. Uh, and if you didn't already gather it from this, yes, they sent me the motherboard. So technically this is sponsored, uh, but I'm giving you an honest review here. If you want to take my word for that, if you don't, I don't guess there's much I can do to help you. If you have any questions about the board, about my experience with the board, feel free to ask me in the comments. I'll have a link to the board on MSI's, MSI's website. Feel free to go check that out as well. Once again, appreciate them helping me and the continued sponsorship. 
and I will see you all soon. Uh, I do have one of their laptops to review for you, and it is an amazing laptop. I'll try and get that up to you in the next week or two. Air of Carthage, signing out for now.